Welcome back to Budget YouTuber, where we go over free tools to level up your content. Today we're covering GIMP, and there's time codes up here for the features I'm going to cover, so check it out. All right, since this is the first episode in the series, we're going to go pretty basic. So bear with me if you're already familiar with GIMP. This will be a little slow, but I just want to keep things at a good pace for the new beginners. So the version of GIMP I'm using is 2.10.36, just so you're aware of what version I'm on. And the very first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to look at the settings. So if you do Edit and Preferences, you can set your dark UI. So you'll notice here that I have uh, my icons set to a certain thing. So if you look at the icons, I've got them set to color. So that's what's over here. And then I've also got it set to huge so that it shows up really easily on the recording. Normally I would have these much smaller, but you know, for recording, I want them to be nice and big. And then the other difference I've done is the theme. I've selected dark. Uh, so if you want yours to look like mine, that's what you're gonna need to do. So go ahead and say, okay. Now on here, you'll see this is where you actually edit things in this main body. This is where your tools are. And over here on the bottom left is where your tool settings are. This will be important in the future. Then up here, there's a few panes that we can use, but we're pretty much just gonna focus on this text pane where you can select your font. And then down here on the right is where you have your layers. So that's also very important. And then lastly, at the bottom, there's gonna be a status bar, but we'll address that when the time comes. So we're gonna say file new. And since we're gonna be making a metallic texture, instead of going 1080p, which I would normally do, I actually want to bump this up by at least, you know, 500 pixels. So let's just bump it up by 1,000 because that makes the math easy. And we'll bump the height up by 1,000 as well because that'll make the math easy. And then later, we're gonna crop down to 1080p. Now, the reason that we're gonna do this is because when you make your textures, there's gonna be a little bit of transparency at the ends that you're not gonna like. So we're gonna zoom out here. You can either zoom out by selecting this down here and picking the zoom level you want. So for example, if I hit 25%, that's what it looks like. Additionally, if you hold down the control key and you use your mouse wheel, you can scroll in and out. So that's how I've just zoomed there is with control and the mouse wheel. All right, we're gonna leave the background as is for the moment, but in GIMP, one of the things that you're gonna to need to know is layers. Just like in Photoshop, they have different layers, and a layer is just something they can display on top of another. So down here, there's a couple ways to do layers. So there's new layer groups, but there's also just new layers. So you can create a new layer here, and then it'll prompt you to name your layer. So we're gonna call this one Metal Texture. You can name it whatever you want. It actually doesn't matter, but I highly encourage you to name it just because it'll help you keep things clear. Now, if we were to just draw on this layer, so let's come over here onto the left side and let's pick a color to draw with. Let's just, you know, pick a nice pink for now. Okay. So if we choose the paintbrush tool and we just draw with its default settings onto this new layer that we've created, we now have a separate layer. Now, what I mean by layer is that you can turn them on or off individually. So these eyeballs show whether or not the layer is visible or not. And then by default, if nothing is visible, you'll see this checkerboard background. Now, obviously this is not the metal we want, so we're gonna delete that. Now, there's a few ways to do this. You can either select it all and delete it with the delete key, or I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that. Another thing you could do is you can hit Control A to select it all and then delete it. So there are multiple ways to do things. You also can do it you know, through the file commands, You know, there's select all. There's a lot of different ways to do things, but I'll try to call out the way I do it. I'm gonna try to teach you the hotkeys as I go. All right, so for metal, we're gonna make a brushed metal texture. Now, I wanted this brushed metal texture to be, I don't know, let's say bluish, right? Why not? It, it could be any color, but for we're just gonna go bluish for now. So I just wanna pick kind of a blue, gray, maybe something like that. Now, the way I did that was in this color palette, you'll notice, and it has two colors. There's the foreground color and the background color. Now, for the most part, you're just gonna use the foreground color, and then if you use this little icon here with the double arrows, you can switch them. And so this is just a way to have two on deck very quickly. You can also click on here, it'll show recent colors down here. And so then you could switch between, you know, 10 or, or so colors pretty easily. Another thing that some people do is that they will create a color layer. So for example, like this background layer, you could pick a bunch of colors. You could take your paintbrush tool. You could say, well, I want a green. And then you could draw a little green patch. And I also want a blue, and you can draw a little blue patch. And then what you can do later is you can use this eyedropper tool to select those colors. So for example, if we go back to our, you know, some sort of grayish, but then we switch to our eyedropper tool, if you're on top of this green, you'll notice that now the foreground has turned green. And then if we're on top of this blue and we click, the foreground has now turned blue. Or if we're on top of the red and we click it, well, now the foreground is the same as the background. So now we've got our metal texture layer that we want to do. So let's go back to some sort of bluish gray. Now we're gonna use what's called the dump bucket tool. So the bucket fill tool here, sorry, I'm using Photoshop language, I think. So if you dump that, 
you'll just get one flat color, which is not metallic, right? Just a big flat color, that's not what we want. So what I'm gonna teach you how to do is a filter. So if you go up here to filters, there's several things built into GIMP that you can do. And the one that we wanna do right now is noise. So we're gonna do some HSV noise, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. What you can do basically is you can make the hue change randomly throughout, kind of like static. Think of static on an old TV. So if we crank this up, you'll notice that the hue changes. Let's put the hue back down. Now if we change the saturation, you'll see that it'll get deeper or lighter as it's being more or less saturated with blue. And then if you change the value, you'll get more black and white variation. The dulling value, if you turn that down, it'll just make it a little bit more rough, which is fine because what we want right now is just a bunch of noise. So we're gonna kind of crank up all these values. I, I like to crank up saturation pretty high. And what we're doing is that we want uh, a random texture to deal with because in the real world, things aren't flat, right? So that looks pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another filter called a blur. So if you go to blur, there's a lot of different kinds of blurs you can do. Uh, and I can explain them in future videos, but for now we're just gonna look at the linear motion blur. And what that's gonna do is blur things in a specific axis. Now you can either in the pop-up alter things, or you can grab these two nodes to alter things. So if I drag it up here, you'll notice that it's now blurring along that line. Whereas if I drag it, you know, here, it's gonna blur along a more straight line. You know, I kind of liked the angle. Let's go, let's go with a harsh angle on our brushed metal. So you'll notice that already this is kind of looking a little bit like metal, but it's maybe a little bit too pure. So we're gonna say, okay, to apply this change. And you'll notice here at the edges that it's kind of getting uh, see-through. We're actually seeing this red through the layer. And that's because the blur effect is actually creating transparencies to come in from the side. This is why I told you to make your the resolution of your canvas too big. So up here at the top, you'll see this is not a 1080p canvas. This is a larger canvas. And that's because we knew that this edges were gonna get blurred like that. Now what we wanna do is we actually wanna repeat the two steps we just did. So we're gonna do another HSV filter. So we're gonna come back down here again to noise and we're gonna do HSV noise. And again, let's crank up, you know, the heat, let's crank up the hue a bit. Let's crank up the saturation a lot. I really like that saturation uh, bleeding through and let's add some more value. And again, these aren't hard set values. You'll notice I'm just clicking around. You can change them as you want and you'll see the previews over here. So last time we did kind of a harsh angle. We're gonna do more or less the same thing again. So we're gonna go to another blur, another linear blur. But this time, instead of doing that exact angle, because I didn't write down the numbers of the angle, right? I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it to be similar. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna make some natural wobble, right? So sometimes I'm gonna ha have a shallower angle, sometimes I'm gonna have a deeper angle. And what this simulates is brush on top of brush. So if you think about brushed metal surface, the wires aren't always gonna scrape the metal in exactly the same way. So we're just gonna kind of choose something. Uh, I tend to like to go with a nice long one at the beginning and then with some kind of medium ones later on. So to me, that looks pretty good. I, you can kind of see grains going throughout it. So I'm just gonna apply that. And then we're gonna do this one more time because it's still to me feeling a little bit uh, simulated and contrived. So let's just quickly do another noise, HSV noise. Crank up the hue, oh no, sorry, hue is, so you'll see a lot of other colors are coming through, pinks, things like that. I didn't want that much hue. I wanted a lot of saturation though. So let's do a lot of saturation again, and let's do a fair bit of value to get some black and whites in there. Uh, you know, I think I want even more value. There we go, now we're getting some dark grays in there. And then again, we're gonna do one more uh, linear blur. And this time I'm just gonna, you know, pick a different angle, but maybe a little bit shorter this time. And so what this is gonna do is it's gonna make different, you know, imperfections inside of the grain to make it feel more organic so that it doesn't feel like it was just, you know, computer generated. So once you kind of get it to something that looks good to you, you just look at the preview and see what looks good. To me, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna save that. And now what we're gonna do is we wanna get rid of this blur around the edge and we only wanna be dealing with a 1080p image anyway. So we wanna crop down to a 1080p image. Now there's a few ways to do that. You can do image canvas size and then you could apply you know, 1920 by 1080 here. And then you could tell it to center. Well, there we go, centered. So if I hit resize there, now we have a 1080p image right here in the middle. But I'm gonna hit undo for now. I'm gonna show you the other way to do that, which is this crop tool. Now the crop tool isn't as good for trying to resize something in a super specific way, but if you just wanted to resize something visually, you can click and drag the area you want to crop to, much like that, and say, ah, that looks good to me, or adjust it a little bit, you know, grab the nodes at the end, adjust it and say, ah, to me that looks good. But if you have a very specific canvas size that you want, which in this case we do, then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna say 1920 by 1080. And we're gonna center that, 
and we'll say resize. Now, this yellow dotted line represents the actual size of the metal texture layer. So if we move this around, you'll see that we just expose more of the metal texture up to the point where we start to see the edge of it where it gets transparent. So you can put that wherever you'd like and you can move it around later. If you decide that you have it exactly perfect and you're never gonna change it again, one of the things you can do to save memory is actually to right click it and to say layer to image size and that will force it to be only the size of your canvas. But we're gonna leave it open-ended for now. We're gonna leave it big. So we've got our metal texture, but now what can we do with our metal texture? Well, I'm thinking, uh, that we're gonna do something like this. Let me let me just do a little quick mock-up layer. So I'm gonna right click over here and create a new layer. Now, alternately, I could have clicked down here on this plus icon to make a new layer. And this layer, I'm just gonna call temp mock-up. So I'm thinking if we choose a color like black, we can do our little mock-up here. And then we're just gonna grab a paintbrush and I'm gonna draw a little mock-up. Now, if you draw freeform, you'll see that it's kind of wiggly like this. So I'm gonna hit undo. Now, one of the things you can do instead is you could just click and make dots, but I don't want just dots either. So let me undo those. I'm gonna hit control Z from here on out. So what you can do is you can hit, click a starting point, And then if you hold down the shift key, it'll show you a straight line that it's gonna draw. And if you click again, it'll draw to that point. And so this is a good way to do, you know, just simple line art like this, right? All right, I'm gonna undo that because that's not what I want either, but I'm gonna show you the mock-up that we're gonna do. So I'm thinking it could be fun to have this kind of be like uh, space airlock doors. Uh, and so this is gonna be like the edge of an airlock that seals together with the bottom part. So we're basically gonna cut out the middle, right? We don't want this middle bit. We just want the top and the bottom. So let's roughly draw what, what we want that to look like. So I'm gonna have it come in on the side, you know, like this. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I know I said this is like a space airlock and a space airlock ideally would be perfect. But, you know, we're just going to freehand draw it because this is the mock-up layer. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm holding shift to create these lines and clicking at each of the nodes that I want to do. Now, you might go, oh, but that, that doesn't look even. This side doesn't look the same as that side. And you're right. So I'm going to hit undo a couple times until I just have this. So what you can do now is you can take this layer Instead of creating a new layer, you can duplicate the layer. So this duplicate icon right here will create an identical icon. So if I hide it, you'll see nothing's changing. It's because it's two identical ones on top of each other. Now, what we want to do is we want to flip this one to the other side. So you could either do that by using a flip tool. So this guy right here, if we select him, he will flip things. And you can either have him flip them horizontally or vertically. Vertically, we'll flip him this way, which is not what we want. So I'm going to control Z. So we're gonna hit horizontal and flip him this way. And now you'll notice over here, it says floating selection transformation. This means it's not a layer yet. It's waiting for you to tell it, do I want to turn it into the same layer it already was, or do I wanna make a new layer? If you wanna make a new layer, you can right click on it and say to new layer. Or if you just want it to go down to the current layer, you can say anchor layer. An anchor layer is the same as what you'll get uh, Sometimes on the screen, if you just have this icon out, you'll see that there's a little anchor right next to the icon. And so if I click that, it will say, oh, anchor it to the current layer. So you'll see now this looks nice and even, right? Perfectly even, in fact. But we have it on two layers. There's the right half and the left half. We don't want that. We want to merge it down to one thing. So we're going to either right click and say merge down, or you'll see the little icon next to this guy is the same as this one down here. So if you hit merge down, it'll take the currently selected layer and it will smash it and flatten it into one layer below. Now, if I did this again, it would merge it onto our metal layer. So now we only have our background layer and our metal layer, which we don't wanna do. We wanna keep our mock-up separate. So I'm gonna hit control Z. So we've got our mock-up layer right here. This at least shows the top what we wanna do. Now we wanna do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer again. And this time, instead of flipping it horizontally, I want to flip it vertically. But I'm going to show you a different way to do that. So instead of using this flip tool, I'm going to say layer up here in the top, and there's a transform. This has some common transformations such as flip horizontally, flip vertically, or rotate. So in this case, let's say rotate 180 degrees. Since it's symmetrical, that'll be the same as flipping it horizontally, but let's just do it like that just to show what it looks like. Now, you'll notice that this doesn't look right because if these smash together, right, you'd get gaps right here in the center. And so we want it to look like an airlock that would close tight. So instead, what we want to do is we want to invert this guy to flip him upside down. You could either 
you flip him back again and then just move him down something like that right and now he looks like he fits or the other thing we could do is we could flip him back down to where he was with our flip tool and then we could say layer crop to content now what this will do is it says now the layer size is not this full size right so remember our metal layer has this yellow dot way out here now our small layer here that we just created has only this size right here so now if we flip him again like with this flip tool we're flipping him in place and so now if we move him up here you'll see whoops i didn't i grabbed the wrong thing i missed the opaque part you have to grab right on the line you see that that now looks like it's going to mash up right and we can hit Control z to undo that so we have a nice metal texture in the back and in the front we have a mock-up that shows more or less what we want to do but here in the middle we want to chop this all out so let's take these two layers i'm going to merge them down again well before we do that actually let me move them out slightly so this time instead of dragging them because if you drag them sometimes you get it off the edge a little bit like that so i'm going to undo Control z so instead if you just click it once with the move tool and then you use your arrow keys you can hold your arrow key down to move it up and down now i'm going to hit undo again to show you because i don't know how far i moved that right so if while i'm hitting down i count how many times i hit down i could do the same thing to the top to keep it even right so i could say one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and do that a few times so now i know i moved it 40 pixels down right but again we aren't going to do this perfectly so i'm not going to count it all mathematically we're just going to keep it more or less even visually and so i'm going to do this just you know eyeballed so we're going to you know move him down like that maybe and then maybe the top we don't want to be totally identical we're going to click and we're going to hold our up arrow a little bit so maybe we want the top to be down just a little bit lower than the bottom i don't know it, it it's all up to you as to what you think looks good so it doesn't matter but once you have it where you want let's go ahead and we will merge these down so again i'm selecting the top layer so that it will merge into the one below it and i'm going to click the merge icon right here and now that's one layer so if we open or close we see that now it's extending beyond the border and i don't want that so i'm going to right click on it and say layer to image size there we go so now it's exactly 1080p while we're at it let's also zoom in just a little bit okay let's use our dump bucket tool now and our dump bucket tool if we click here it's going to fill this in but you'll notice it doesn't fill perfectly and that's because there's some anti-aliasing happening on the edge of these lines and so the dump bucket filled as far as it could without overfilling but if we click it again it will fill the rest of the way now sometimes you don't want to do that because let me hit undo so if we zoom in here you'll see some anti-aliasing and again i'm zooming in and out with the control and the mouse wheel but we could have zoomed in and out with this right so let's say like 150. so if you zoom in here you'll see some anti-aliasing right here and now if we click in here it will fill in not only this but it might mess with this anti-aliasing slightly see and it did now this looks like a rough edge which we don't like so i'm going to hit undo which is Control z again and the way that we can avoid that is that before we do our dump bucket tool what we can do is we can do a selection so that it only applies to that selection and i'm going to show you a few ways to do that so the basic way is with a rectangle tool now for now i'm just going to turn off feather edges we'll go over that in a different lesson um, and so we're just going to do a straight selection so if you do a straight selection like this and you were to hit the delete key you get a nice crisp deleted rectangle let me undo that so if i were to come through here and you know select like that and then we could paint that in right and i could select like that and we could paint that in alternately we could also select like that and then we can change down here in the options to do add to the current selection so we could make another rectangle so it would select an additional piece right and we could go through here and we could select all the little pieces that we wanted to paint in right we could try to select each of them very specifically that's one way we could do it i'm not going to do that so let's click on the lasso tool this is another way you could do it so with the lasso tool you can draw freeform selections so now if i have that selected i'm going to double click in the middle to finalize that selection if i hit delete you get that part all selected i'm going to unselect it so you can see right so it cut out just the part i selected freeform but if you don't click and drag and instead you just click and move click and move it'll make these nice crisp straight lines so you could come through here click 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 right and you could draw your way around all of these so that when you do your dump bucket tool it applies only to that section but we're not going to do this either because again this is too much work right you'd have to paint your way all around that i'm just showing you different ways that you could go about doing it 
So what we're going to do actually is we're going to do what's called the magic selection tool. Now there's select by color, but in the tools you'll notice that there's these little arrows in the bottom right corners of each tool. And that means that there are tools hidden inside of there. And in here we also have fuzzy select. That's the tool we want. So if you click and hold on this, it'll open up the menu out to the side and you can select one of these. We're going to select fuzzy select. So fuzzy select will let us do something really cool here. So again, with fuzzy select, I wanna turn off feather edges. Again, we'll talk about that later, but basically it's a way to do some very harsh anti-aliasing. And we wanna make sure that our mode is this default one, which is just replace the current selection. So it says make a new fresh selection. So if we select in here, it will select all of these pieces that we've done. But this one you'll see has actually selected too much, right? It's gone right up here to the edge. And so if we did our dump bucket tool again, You'll see again, it made that harsh edge right there, which we don't want. So I'm gonna control Z to undo that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna alter our selection. So let's change our zoom back to 50%. And then you can scroll up and down with the mouse wheel as another thing I didn't show. So we have too big a selection, but what we can do up here in the select menu is you can shrink your selection. So if you choose shrink, you can specify a number of pixels to shrink by. Now, I don't know exactly, so let's just say like 10 pixels and see what it looks like, because we can always undo it. 10 pixels. Hey, that looks like that'll work, right? It'll paint inside our lines and should work just great. But if we zoom in right here, so I'm going to hit control and mouse wheel. Oh, look, we're going to miss this little piece. So let's couple what we've done. Instead of using the fuzzy select to add to this, let's just use a rectangle. And we'll click the mode on it, which adds to the current selection. You can also do that with a hotkey shift. And so if we just grab this and you'll see the icon change it's actually got a little plus next to it and that shows that we're about to add to the selection and now I'm mouse wheeling down to see this and now I'm gonna do another thing you can either grab this wheel to slide over to the left or you can hold down shift mouse wheel and shift mouse wheel will go left and right so now we can select this piece and then I'm gonna mouse wheel up to select the final piece and then I'm gonna zoom back out to 50% you'll see that now we have all the things selected that we want right so let's grab our dump bucket tool and we'll dump now. And now if we zoom into this little corner right here, we'll notice that it didn't uh, make a harsh edge because it constrained our dump bucket to only the part that was selected. That looks like a pretty good mock-up. I'm gonna hit control A to select the whole screen so we can see it better. Now, another thing you can do in here is opacity. Opacity determines how much you can see through something. If something's 100% opaque, you can't see through it. Whereas if something is, you know, 10% opaque or 8% opaque, it's almost invisible, right? So let's just set our opacity to, I don't know, somewhere around here for now. It doesn't have to be specific. This is just a mock-up layer to kind of let us see what the thumbnail is looking like. That's looking pretty good. I think I am leaning back towards making it more even on the top and bottom though. So I'm gonna choose the move tool and we're gonna click on this layer and we're gonna move it back up a little bit. So to me, that looks good. I, I like the symmetrical look. So I'm gonna again, right click on here and say, uh, layer to image size, just to get rid of that weird yellow bounding box that shows outside of it. Perfect, that looks pretty good. So this way we can put some text here in the middle and then we can have our cool metal outside. So let's work on the text next. Let's choose our text tool and you can click and drag where you want the text to be. But by default, it's gonna be whatever color you have selected right here. So let's change the color. Let's say, let's just flip the foreground and the background and then let's make this a more intense red. So you can slide the color picker around and pick you know, the color you want. So we'll go with a very intense red. And then you can click and drag to set where you want your text to go. And then you just type. So let's say, you know, how to... Now, you could see that this looks broken. I can't see my text, right? The cursor's moving, but I can't see it. Now, this is an important thing to understand about layers. So if we look over here to the right, you'll notice that our text layer is beneath the metal layer. That means it's invisible. So what we need to do is we need to lift this layer up higher. And you can do that by clicking this up arrow right here to move it one higher or one lower. But I'm gonna delete this for now. We're gonna delete this layer with the X key or you could right click it and say delete layer also shows the X key next to it. What you could do is before you create your text, you can select the layer above which you want the text to show up. I'm gonna click and drag right here to show our text. And it will, you'll notice if you keep an eye on the pane over here on the right, it's gonna create this layer on top of that temp mockup layer. So now as we start to type, how to make a metallic thumbnail. OK, 
Okay, now that doesn't look very good, and we'll go over the reasons why, but you'll notice that the layer shows up on the tippy top. So what we wanna do is we wanna select everything in here, and you wanna look at your options over here. So all the things are smushed together, and that's because this tool right here shows negative 37 line spacing. So let's change this 37. I'm just gonna hold the up arrow here until it looks good. That looks pretty good. So it was that the line spacing was just too skinny and it was causing them to smash on top of each other. You can do the same thing with the horizontal. If you hold this up or this down, you can squish or extend the text a little bit. And then you can justify it above here, either left, right, center, or full. The full doesn't tend to work very good in my opinion, so I tend to do center, left, or right is all. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to make this font bigger. So we're going to hold the up arrow here until it's bigger, or you could also do it here. There's a little pop-up above that lets you do some of these things, and then there's this toolbox on the left, which is maybe the more consistent way to use a tool. But this font I don't like at all, so let's get rid of that. Let's just choose a nice, you know, middle-of-the-road font. I know there's one called November Thin that looks pretty good. November Thin. And now I'm gonna base our thumbnail on this. So let's increase the size again until it looks really good. I'm gonna come down here to this new line and we're gonna delete the new line there just so that we can have all of this fit in two rows. So how to make a metallic thumbnail. That looks pretty good, right? All right, something like that. We'll leave a little bit of you know spacing around the sides and then I'm gonna actually shrink the space between them just a little bit because I think it looks like the gaps here and below aren't quite consistent. And then I'm gonna use the move tool to click on this and I'm gonna hold the down arrow to just move it down a little bit until it looks more or less centered to me. To me, that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanna measure, an easy way to measure is you can use this select tool right here and you could kind of just draw a selection. So let's zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna draw a box from here down to the letters. And at the very bottom of the screen, you can see that it shows you how big the rectangle is. So keep your eye on this status bar right here where it currently says 538 megabytes. If we come down to the tip of there, you can see that it's 76 pixels down. So it, I'm making that rectangle really wide so you can see that's the big number. So 504 by 76. So it's about 76 pixels from the edge of our metal. So if we scroll down to the bottom and we do the same sort of measurement over here, you can see that it's 92 pixels. So we're actually a little bit closer to the top than we are to the bottom. So let's scroll back out to 50% and let's move this down just a little bit since we're closer to the top than the bottom. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. We're gonna go down about 20 pixels. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, that's probably gonna put us closer to the bottom than to the top, but that's fine. It's it doesn't have to be mathematically perfect. It's whatever looks aesthetically pleasing to you. In fact, now when I look at it, it does look a little bit low, so I'm gonna put it back up about 10 or so. And I just did that with the arrow keys. And let's move it to the right just a little bit. Okay, to me that looks more or less centered, looks good. I think that's shaping up nicely. So now the next piece. We are going to import an image to have a texture in the back here. Because, so this way we'll have a nice, you know, metallic front, but let's do something that contrasts in the background. Maybe, I don't know, like a brick or something. I'm gonna open up my reference page, and again, you can get to this reference down in the description. This is where I listed all the tools in the overview that we're gonna cover. And at the very bottom are these references of different media sources you can have, and one of them is image libraries. So let's open up this Openverse images. We're gonna open that in a new tab. And then here, we're gonna just search for bricks. Now it's important to keep over here on the right, use commercially selected and modify or adapt selected because then that way you can change whatever you get. And you can look down until you find whatever bricks you find appealing. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we're gonna use. This will be great. So let's click into here and then you can click get this image and it will open it up in a bigger window where you can download it. Unfortunately, they love their ads and so they always make it a little hard, but this download icon will let you download it. And then you can pick the size you want. You always wanna get you know, about as big a size as you possibly can. And so this won't actually be as big as our 1080p image, but it'll do well enough. And then once you have it, you can open up that folder. So in here, we've just got this kind of ugly photo. Let me close this. And now we've just got our GIMP open and our folder open. And if you move him over here, you can either just drag and drop him into here like that to create a new layer. Unfortunately, it created it down low, so it was hard to see. But I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna show you a different way. So rather than dragging and dropping, another way you can do it is you can say, file, open as layers, and you can then go find the layer that you just got. So we're just gonna go to our downloads folder. 
and in here, that was the one we just downloaded. Now, if I selected multiple ones, right? So for example, if I hold down control and I open up, you know, multiple ones like this. So I'm just gonna open this layer and this microphone one. And now if I say open, it will actually import these into separate layers. So now we have this microphone layer and this brick layer totally separate from one another. I'm gonna delete this microphone layer because we don't want it for now. And I'm also gonna move this brick layer down below our temp mockup. We actually are gonna want it eventually down below whatever we use for metal, but this metal texture is gonna stay here as a full uh, image just so that we can copy and paste from it whenever we want. So let's change this one and let's rename it to brick. Now it's way too small. We need it to be much bigger. So instead, we're just going to size this layer separately. So we're gonna click on the layer menu. If I say layer to image size, you'll see that it won't change it, right? It just, well, since it added black, but it didn't change the size of the brick. So I'm gonna hit undo. Now we're gonna do one little thing here that's a little weird. If you right click on here, there's add alpha channel. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, instead of adding a background if I change the size, I wanna add transparency. So to show that, let's switch these colors around. So instead of having black in the background, let's make it something bright, like bright green. So now if I change the layer size again, and I say layer to image size, now it's bright green back here. And that's because that's what I've identified as my background. So I'm gonna hit Control Z again. If I right click on this brick layer and I say add alpha channel, now when I say layer to image size, it changes the bounding box of the layer, but it didn't add any background. It just allowed it to be transparent. But that's still what, not what we want, so let's undo. And this time we're gonna go layer, scale layer. So scale layer will actually stretch the layer. And then here, we want it to be at least 1920 wide. Uh, we have some wiggle room on the top and bottom since it doesn't have to totally display, but let's try 1920 and you'll see that it'll auto adjust the height for you. I'm gonna cancel out of this. If we had done layer, scale layer, and if instead we had tried to set the height and we'd said 1080, cause it's 1080p, right? You'd be like, oh wait, that's not wide enough. That's only 1440 wide. So I need to rechange the sides. So let's go 1920. And now it'll be too tall, but that's fine. We don't care if it's too tall. Uh, I guess if you wanted, you could, you know, you could break this. So this chain says that it has to scale, you know, one-to-one -one height and width. You could break this and you could say, oh, I only want it to be 1080 tall and I want it to stretch to that size. So if we do this, you'll see now that the bricks are kind of skinny. They're long and skinny. And that's because we stretched the image out. So I'm gonna hit undo again. And this time I'm gonna hit layer, scale layer. And we're just gonna change it to 1920, but we're gonna let the height go nice and big. And now we've got our bricks. We'll use that for now. And with our temp mockup, it's a little bit harder to see on top of the bricks. So we're gonna increase the opacity on our temp mockup just to make it extra clear where it is. We still have a couple things to do. So we want our metal texture to be on top of the brick, right? So we wanna be able to see the metal on the top and the bottom, but we wanna be able to see the brick in the middle. Now we could take our brick and we could take like the eraser and we could try to erase all of this to say, hey, show me the metal right here. But it would be really hard to match our mock-up and not go over and under, right? You'll see that this looks really sloppy. It doesn't look good at all. So that's not a good tool to do this. So we're gonna undo that. We have this mock-up layer. So one of the things you can do with your mock-up layer is you can now use this fuzzy select to select different regions of your tool to delete or to use. So the brick, I'm gonna keep this layer pure as it is and I'm gonna right click and duplicate or alternately I could click this one. Let's duplicate the layer so that we have a copy. So I'm gonna call this one brick original and I'm gonna call this one, I'm double clicking on this to rename it, brick cut. And then I'm gonna actually hide the original layer because we don't really care about the original. We want to see the, the cut layer. So if I don't hide it, and I go back to this erase tool and I start erasing on the cut layer. Wait, it doesn't look like it's changing, right? But now if we hide the background one, ah, it's that the brick layer did get cut. It's just it cut and then revealed underneath of it an identical image that was impossible to see. So I'm gonna hit edit undo again because we don't want to have actually deleted that undo eraser, there we go. We're gonna hide this original layer. And sometimes when I start hiding things, I like to drag them down to the very bottom. So they're way even behind the background. And sometimes I even will change it to say like reference, ref brick to say, hey, this is just a reference of the brick material. So this brick cut, what we wanna do is we wanna cut it exactly to where we have this mock-up line. And this cut one, we also don't need it to extend beyond the borders. So we could resize this to image, but first let's actually change where we have this. I'm gonna hide the text for a second so we can just see the brick. You'll notice that these letters kind of stick out too much. And that, so what I wanna do is I wanna move this brick layer down a little bit to hide those maybe more egregious letters. 
until I, I get the part of the brick that looks good to me. So I'm gonna put it about like there. To me, that looks good. It also kind of pleasingly puts this seam in the bricks about the same distance for, uh, from the metal as this seam. So I'm gonna go down just a couple more to make that truly even. And again, I was tapping the down, I clicked on it and tapped the up and down arrow keys. Now you'll notice that my brick actually is starting to reveal some of the metal, but that's fine because this isn't the part that we wanted to delete anyway. And now on my brick cut, I'm gonna hit right click, layer to image size. And I'm gonna go back to my fuzzy select. Now, if I tried to select this area, and let's choose replace existing selection. If I tried to select that, it wouldn't work. Let's turn up our threshold a little bit to show why. If I click again, you'll notice that it's trying to select for the brick. I don't want to delete this brick. I want to delete the part that's not in shadow. So I'm going to hit Control A to select all. We're going to go to the mock-up layer. And now when we click here, it will fuzzy select just this area, which is what we want to delete on the brick layer. But if I hit delete, nothing happens. And that's because I was deleting the mock-up layer. So it's a little bit weird. You have to learn to switch back and forth between layers. So I'm gonna hit Control A to show nothing selected again. So if we go to the mock-up layer, click here. Now it's selected that portion. Now we click the brick layer, and now we can hit the delete key, and it'll now show that. It's because the brick's been cut right here. And now we're gonna click back onto the mock-up layer. We're gonna select this portion with the fuzzy select tool. We're gonna click back on the brick layer, and we're gonna hit delete. And just like that, you can see your brick layer shining through. Now I'm gonna hide the mock-up layer for just a minute to show that this is what it would look like. Now that doesn't look great. Uh, it, the contrast doesn't look very good. The transitions don't look very good. And also the brick's too bright because what we want is we want text on top of it. But that brick, it's way too bright. So there's a few ways we could deal with it. One of the ways is like this mock-up where you put a color in front of it. But eh, that's a little clunky and it's a, bit, a little bit limited. So instead, I'm gonna actually duplicate this cut brick layer to do some coloring. Now I'm gonna hide the one that we just did and I'm gonna rename this one to be brick color. Now I could just color this one, but if I make a mistake and I need to go back, it's nice to have a layer that was pure. And so I like to kind of rename these as I go to show what I'm doing to alter them. So this brick layer, we're gonna color. Now there's a few ways to alter color. There's this whole color tool here now, unfortunately, because I've uh, set my window setting to be 175% text size to make it easier to see on camera, that means that this menu is not working right. It's hidden. But one of the things I can do is I can change the window size to shrink it down a little bit. And then once it's shrunk down a little bit, now you can actually see the menu coming up above. So we're going to scroll through here and we're going to click uh, colorize is one we could do. So let's click that guy first. And now you'll see that what colorize does is that it totally changes the hue of the brick. So you could set it to be, you know, crazy colors. You could say, oh, I want it to be pink or I want it to be green or whatever you want it to be, right? And then once you've got your hue set, you can change the saturation to be really saturated or undersaturated, so either gray or blown out. And you can change the lightness to either be dark or bright. But everything kind of gets that same hint of a hue, which can look fun, but it can also look fake. So I'm gonna hit cancel because this is not what I wanna do. Instead, I'm gonna hit color and we're gonna go up to this top option here called hue saturation. Now let me make this screen full screen again. Hue saturation is a little bit different because when you change the hue, it doesn't, it's not coloring the grout here, the seams, right? It's just shifting the hues that are currently on screen. So the grays are gonna to tend to stay more or less the same and it's just that the hue itself is gonna change. So let's go, I don't know, let's pick like a deep purple maybe, right? Now we can saturate it a lot. Ooh, maybe not that much, because if you saturate it too much, you'll start getting these artifacts where it kind of looks like the colors are bleeding through, right? So let's not saturate too crazy much. We'll just go up a little bit. And then the hue, I wanted a dark purple, but that's not looking quite purple, that's fine. We'll do one more thing to change that. So that purple will do, I'll hit okay. And now I'm going to do one more color adjustment. So again, because of my broken screen, I'm going to have to shrink this down. Another thing you can do is brightness uh, and contrast. This is a common setting that you'll do is brightness contrast. And again, I'll maximize so we can see the whole screen. So with brightness contrast, I can either lighten or darken the image. So I want to darken it a bit. And then contrast will make the colors either more samey, in this case gray, or more different, in this case, you know, 
really highlighting the edges. So we're just going to turn up the contrast a little bit and we're going to turn the brightness way down until we get something like that. So we have this nice dark, uh, you know, purple brick background. Uh, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm actually going to combine things that I did. So we've still got this mock-up layer, which is right on top of it. If we turn it on, it goes almost black. But that's because our opacity is way up high. So if we go to 100% and it's now totally black, if we shrink it down to 0%, it's totally invisible. But if we put it somewhere in the middle, it just adds a little bit of darkness to that background layer. So I'm going to just eyeball it to where it looks good to me. So let's do, you know, about 30% there. That just adds a little bit of dark. So if you want to see what it looks like without it, you can click this eyeball to hide and unhide it. And you can see that it's just adding a little bit of shadow to it, which I think looks good. Now, for the metal, what we're going to do is that we want to make a transition. So this right here just looks stark on the edge, and it looks fake, which I don't like. So there's a couple ways we could address this. There's different ways to do shadowing, but I'm going to show you a way that I think is about the easiest. So we're going to again use our fuzzy select tool. We're going to use our mock-up layer as the mask layer so that we know where to go. But first, we need a new layer. We're going to call this new layer, and we're going to name it shade. Uh, let's say metal shade. So this will be the transition layer between the metal and the brick. So if we select our mock-up layer and we use our fuzzy select, we can select this portion right here. And then if we say add to the current selection, we can get this layer right here. So now we've got the top and the bottom selected. Now what I want to do is I'm going to actually grow the selection ever so slightly. So if we say select grow and let's grow it by two pixels. Sure, that's fine. We just need a little bit of growth. Because what I want to do now is we did an add, we're going to go back and we're doing, going to do a subtract. And we're going to subtract the top, and we're going to subtract the bottom. And so now if we zoom way in, you'll see that we have just this little layer selected right there. Just this little layer selected right there. Now what we want to do is we actually just want to dump bucket some black shadow into there. So let's pick our foreground, make it black. We'll pick our dump bucket. And let's zoom in so we can see. Again, I'm doing control mouse wheel. We'll click there. Sometimes the easiest way to see is to turn everything else off. So let's just disable all these other backgrounds. And now if we zoom in, oh, it's because I, I did it on the temp mock-up layer. Whoops, I apologize. Edit, undo. Sometimes you make a mistake and you gotta undo. Now, if you'll notice this undo menu here, it tells you what you're undoing. So I'm just undoing the visibility right now. So I'm gonna do undo bucket fill, undo bucket fill, undo bucket fill. Oh, but fuzzy select. No, I don't want to undo that. So what we need to do is before I click the bucket, I need to switch back to the new layer that we created for the shade. And now we want to click on the bucket. Now I can zoom in with control mouse wheel. And now when I drop the bucket there, ah, painted it nice and black, just like we expected. Now, again, if you want to just see that you could unclick all these other layers. And now you can see that you just have this nice line there. Let's go back to 50%. So if I hit control A, you can see we have just this nice line right there. So I'm actually going to rename this. I'm going to call this temp metal border. And the reason is because I'm going to duplicate this in case I need to go back to this original and this new one we'll call metal shade. Let's turn our other layers back on our metal layer, especially. Now, some of these layers are temporary. We're like the brick cut doesn't need to be turned on. The background doesn't even need to be turned on. So I'm just going to turn on the two that we actually care about for now. Oh, let's turn on the text. If we look at our little border we have, it's very thin. It's almost invisible, hard to see. So maybe I overdid it with the two pixels of shrinking and maybe I needed, I'm, I needed a bigger, thicker border. So what we can do is instead of the fuzzy select this time, we can do the select by color. And what this does is it'll select everything of a similar color. So if we scroll way in and we click on this border we just made, and now we scroll way out, you'll see that it selected the top border and the bottom border. It selected everything that was blackish, and since all we have on our metal shade layer is that, it selected our, into our total shade. Now I'm going to do select grow, and let's grow it by, I don't know, five pixels. Let's make it much thicker border than I have. Okay, so now we got a nice thick border, and instead of doing the dump bucket, well, no, let's do the dump bucket. That'll be more consistent with what I've done. So we'll just click up and top and bottom a few times until it fills in all the colors, because again, if you just do it the one time, it's not going to fill it in. You're going to have some edges that aren't done. And on this, we don't care if there's a harsh border. So hit control all and zoom in. We don't care if this edge looks hard because we're going to soften that up here in just a second. So what we want to do now is another filter. If we go to filter blur, Gaussian blur, 
What this will do is it just softens at the edges. So if I zoom in again with control, sh control mouse wheel, you'll see already that that's blurring it 1.5 pixels. If you increase the size of that, it blurs it more, but it also makes it more transparent, and so it doesn't show up as much, which can be tricky, right? We want the transition to be several pixels wide. I'm gonna cancel for now. We're gonna make another one. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer and duplicate this layer again. So we're gonna have three different shade layers for a second. The first one, we're just gonna do filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we're gonna leave it on the default, just that 1.5, because we want a nice crisp, well, nice blurred edge, but that's at that deep. The second layer, we're gonna do a similar thing, but we're gonna blur it more. So if we do blur, Gaussian blur, and this time let's go like, I don't know, seven pixels, something like that, just a little bit bigger. And then the last one, we're gonna filter blur again, Gaussian blur again. Instead of seven pixels, let's go like, I don't know, 14 pixels, something like double. Well, let's even go, let's go 20 pixels. And now if we zoom out, you'll notice that there's a soft transition to our metal layer because of this border that we've got. So I actually think that we could use a harsher transition a little bit. So I'm gonna take this one that we blurred 20 pixels and I'm gonna duplicate it. And you'll see that that is increasing the shade. Let's actually do that a few times until it looks the way we want. That looks pretty good. And then I'll duplicate this one a couple times. And then let's duplicate our last one just once or twice to get kind of a harsh layer. Nope, I was wrong. That doesn't look good. I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay. So we've got all these shade layers that are making a little bit of a transition to our metal layer, which I think looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna merge these down so that they're out of our way until we're down to just the one shade layer. Okay, so I've merged all the shades down until we just have one shade layer. And if we turn this on and off, you can see that it's pretty drastic change between the harsh flat line that we had before and a shadowy transition. Now, if you think it looks too black, you can always turn it down a little bit, right? Turn the opacity down so that it doesn't show as much. Or if you wanted to, we could colorize it to fit a theme, right? So if we click color, well, again, it doesn't show well, so I have to shrink this window. If we did color colorize, you know, you could increase the lightness a little bit and you could increase the saturation and you could try to change the hue to be, you know, maybe something purpley like that and then make, put the darkness back down a little bit. So the transition wouldn't have to be black necessarily. It could be, you know, more purpley, something like that. I think for now I'm going to keep that. Let's, let's go a little bit deeper purple like that. So an almost black, but with a tinge of purple. I think that looks pretty good. But I'm not loving the color of our metal now. So we've got our metal texture here. I'm going to duplicate this layer. And this one I'm going to call metal colored, just to keep it distinct. And this one, again, we could do a colorize or we could do a hue saturation. So let's, sorry, I apologize about this menu going off the edge. Let's try colorize and let's increase the, the saturation on it a little bit. Let's make it darker. And you'll notice that when I, if you kind of balance these out, you can see the brush strokes more, right? So if I blow it out too much, you can't see the brush strokes enough. And if I blow it under too much, you can't see it enough. But let's pick our hue first. You could, we could go all purple, right? And just make it a purple theme. Or we could do something that complements. We could go with a red to make it match our text. Or we could do something that just sticks out uh, because we want it to be really you know, bright and vibrant on YouTube. So maybe let's go with like a cyanish sort of color like that. Again, not that this is, you know, maybe the prettiest color to do, but it does make it pop on YouTube because suddenly now it's calling attention to itself because it has drastically different colors. So I'm liking that pretty good, but I even want more brush strokes. So I'm going to say, okay, and now I'm going to, again, sorry, shrink the window so that I can get the color menu. And we're going to go to brightness contrast. Let me move this down and maximize our window again. So in brightness contrast, I'm going to increase the contrast like that so that we can really see those brush strokes and then i'm going to turn the brightness down a little bit and you can just kind of play around with these settings until it looks the way you want that's looking kind of interesting to me because again with a thumbnail you just want something that calls attention to itself that makes people look at it and this is interesting it, it it's not maybe you know the most beautiful art but it is calling attention to itself in a weird way because we're using those heavy brush strokes on the metal and again, if you want to turn on and off that layer, you can compare it to the metal that used to be there, which was more of, you know, an aluminum, dull, drab metal to this bright, vibrant, grab attention and make you look at it metal. Let's go back to our text here, and I'm going to show you how to make a couple alterations to our text. So the text, 
uh, is looking a little flat now compared to everything else, right? So as often happens in this, I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then on this time, I'm going to right click on the layer and I'm going to say discard text information. And it's because I don't want to edit the font. I want to edit the shape. And I'm also going to say right click layer to image size just so that we don't see that border. So now if we turn off our text one, it looks the same, right? We have two layers that both look like text, but one layer is a shape and one layer is a font. So in here, I could edit what the font says. If I came in here and I clicked on this, I could still type letters, but we don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit undo. Whereas here, I can't edit this layer like that. But what I can do is I can use the fuzzy select. So I'm going to actually uh, make a couple of these. I'm going to duplicate this two more times. I'm going to say text highlight. I'm going to name this one text low light. And then I'm going to name this last one text shade. Now for now, let's just work on the shade. So let's turn off these two. So we're not looking at those. And let's turn this text guy back on. So we have the original text on and now we have the shade on. So I'm going to use, instead of using the fuzzy select, let's switch back to the color select. And I'm going to hit control A so that everything is selected. But now I want to unselect just the transparent stuff. So if I come into here, I can unselect with this button right here. I'm going to turn off feathered edges. Sorry, that was on before. So if I unselect everything out here, now I just have the text selected. And I'm going to say select grow to make it maybe a little bit bigger. Let's go two pixels bigger. I don't know. We're just guessing, right? And now uh, if we were to paint on this layer, we would be painting on top of this text, which can sometimes be hard. So the dump bucket uh, should work pretty good, right? But I'd have to do it on each of those, which is a little tedious. So instead I'm going to click the paint brush and then instead of painting all over this, which again could be tedious, I'll hit undo. We're going to come down here to the side to the tool options and we're going to change the size of our brush to be huge. So now I can just paint across this in one single stroke. All right. So if I hit control all, we now have this black version of the text more or less, and it's just displaying on top of the font text because it's on a higher layer. So let's move him down one. And now it's a little imperceptible, but there is a shadow layer underneath there. Let's make it obvious by doing a color inversion. So again, I'm going to have to shrink this down. Sorry, just so that we can get the colors menu. If you come up here to colors, one of the things you can do is you can invert the color. And sometimes when you're working dark on dark, it's easier to invert the color temporarily, work with it, and then you can re-invert it back to black. So now that we have this white layer, let's do a filter blur Gaussian blur. And, you know, let's just make it stick out a little bit. So the shadow could go, you know, I don't know that far, maybe five pixels. That looks great. And then I'm actually going to duplicate the shadow layer once just to make it a harsher shadow. And then let's duplicate it one more time make a really harsh shadow. And then I'm going to merge all those down into that one text shade layer. But you'll notice that the edges of these kind of look gross. So if we zoom in again to like 150, the edges of these just seem a little bit gross. So we're going to come back here to the fuzzy select. And this time we're going to turn on the feathered edges and let's turn it up to, I don't know, eight pixels. Let's, you know, I'm just eyeballing, right? And we're going to say, replace the current selection. This way, when we select the transparent, it is actually selecting down over top of that a little bit. And so if we hit delete, you'll see that it delete deleted that harsher part. If we control all, you'll see it deleted the harsher part, but it also gave us a feathered edge, an eight pixel feathered edge, which looks pretty good, I think. All right. So that's how the feathered edge can be used. And now if we go back here to the text shade, uh, we can do another value invert. So if we do color value invert, again, I'll have to shrink the window, sorry, color and invert. Now we get our dark shadow again. Now that dark shadow is not super noticeable, so we might change our mind and we might go back to white or we might colorize it later. We'll see. All right, we'll scroll up here to our higher ones. We want to do a text highlight and a text low light. Now let's do the highlight first because I think that'll explain what I'm trying to do here. Let's turn off the default text so that we're only seeing this text highlight. Now, if we click our rectangle here and we hit feather edge, you can feather an edge just like we did with that last shadow. So let's say, I don't know, 40 pixels might be a bit much. Let's go like 30 pixels. And what I want to do is I just want to leave a top portion of these letters to make brighter on the highlight layer, kind of like lights coming from above. So we're just going to select the bottom portion and we're going to delete it. Something like that. 
right? So that just leaves the top part. But you'll see, since these letters don't all line up, that feels a little sloppy. It doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to undo that. So instead of using a rectangle, what I'm going to do is the lasso tool. But again, I'm going to say feather edge, and I'm going to make it, you know, what did we do? 30 pixels, something like that. So now I'm going to select the bottom again, but I'm going to try to vary my height based on the height of the letter. So I'm going to click, and by default it does straight lines. And that maybe is going to look too jagged if I do straight lines, just clicking around like that. So if I, let's, uh, I'm going to undo that. So instead of doing straight lines, I'm actually going to freeform draw. So I'm just going to drag my cursor across the screen and draw to say, I, you know, I want to keep the tops of these letters. And then I want to delete the bottom portion. I'm going to double click on it to finalize my selection. I'll hit delete. Now that looks pretty good, but the M is maybe not enough. So I'm going to undo that with control Z. So we're going to just try to draw a better version. That's a little more consistent. And you can stop drawing in the middle and it'll make a node like that. And now you can move, you know, the screen to where you want it to be. And then you can start drawing again. And then again, I'm going to slide this over and I'll just do straight lines to finish because that's just fine. Double click to finalize and delete to delete those. And now you'll see a little bit more of a consistent coloring across that. So that's going to be our highlight layer for the top. We're going to do the same thing to the bottom here. And now I'm going to go select grow and we'll grow like another 10 pixels up because it felt like I didn't select quite enough. And so now when I hit delete, there we go. It's a little bit more of just the top. And so now we're going to turn our text layer back on and we're going to change this text highlight layer to be much brighter. So again, I have to change the window size to get to the color menu. Sorry. Again, and usually you won't have to do this. It's just because I have this at weird resolutions for recording. So if we change this uh, hue saturation, for example, well, you know, I think it's easier to do this one with a colorize. So let's just go to colorize. I'm going to maximize again. And this time we're going to, we still want it to be, you know, reddish, right? We just want it to be really bright. So we're going to maximize the saturation and then we're going to increase the lightness a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe let's go a little more orange. That looks pretty interesting. Again, it's not that it has to be fine art. It just has to look a little interesting. So that gives us kind of a glow coming from the top and we'll hit OK. And you can just change those sliders around until something looks cool. All right. And now I'm going to turn off the highlight layer so that we can work on the low light layer. Let's turn the low light layer on. I'm also going to turn off the main text so we can just see the low light because it makes it a little easier to see when you delete stuff. Now this one, I think since the bottoms line up pretty good, I think we can just use a rectangle. So we're just going to use a rectangle. And we're going to say, hey, let's delete, you know, down to like there. And then again, we're going to delete this next row down to like there. Maybe a little bit more than that. So I'm going to hit control Z and I'm going to change my rectangle to go down a little bit more. Something like that. OK, let's turn our main text on. Let's turn our highlight on. And then we're going to affect our low light. Again, I'm going to shrink the window so that we can grab in from the color menu. Color. This one, let's just do brightness contrast. Because I don't want to change the color. I think red is fine. We just want it to be darker, right? So we're going to shrink, shrink the darkness down like this. And then maybe, you know, we can't get dark enough on this first one. But you can repeat this again. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now you will notice one weird little thing, which is that there's kind of a, a bright light shining from behind it. And that is this text layer or sorry, this text layer right here. So if we turn off the main text layer, you'll notice that that goes away. And that's because it is slightly overstepping the bounds of what we duplicated. And a way around that is just to duplicate this text layer again. And we're going to discard the text information on this layer again. And I'm going to turn off the base text layer. This is now just a reference layer. So this is just going to be text. And what we can do on this is if we make it layer to image size as well, and we scroll out a little bit, what we can do is we can use our fuzzy select to delete all of the edges just a little bit. So we're going to feather the edge a little bit. Let's just do maybe like two pixels of feather. And we're going to select all of this stuff around here. And then I didn't notice any bright ones inside the letters, but if we did, we could uh, in add to the current selection and we could add, you know, the holes of the letters like this. 
clicking in each of these, right? I don't think this is necessary because it didn't look like there was, uh, you know, weird things inside of it. But, you know, just for the sake of completeness, let's do that. And now we're going to do select grow. And let's grow by, well, let's try one pixel first to see how that goes. And we're just going to delete, shave one pixel off the outside. So I'm going to hit the delete key. And now if we hit control A, you'll notice that the little shine behind the letters is gone, right? So if we turn the main font back on, you'll see that the shine reappears when we turn it on and off. And that was, again, just because the main font was actually slightly bigger than these anti-aliased shape fonts. But that's how we got it. Now, I'm not loving the color of these fonts. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a combined text layer, and I'm going to do some colorization on that. So the easy way to do that is to turn everything off that you're not playing with. So now we just have the text we want. And I'm going to right click over here. And instead of saying new layer, we're going to say new from visible. That's going to make a combined layer of the three layers that were currently visible. And so now when we hide those three layers that were currently visible, we get this single layer that was everything. And I'm going to call this combined text. So now we can turn our text shade back on. You can see the shade behind it. We can turn our bricks back on. We can turn our, our metal back on, and we can turn our metal shade back on. So let's change this combined text to just be a slightly different color. So if I say color, oops, sorry, again, I got to change the screen size to select from that color menu. Uh, let's do, uh, instead of colorize, I want to try a hue saturation. Let's try this hue saturation guy. Okay, so let's see what looks better. Ooh, some pinks maybe look good. I think it contrasts just enough with the purples, but looks interesting. So let's increase our saturation a little bit and maybe turn our brightness up and down to see what that looks like. I'm just playing this by eye to just see what it looks like. I think what I wanna do actually is maybe darken this up just a little bit, uh, make it a little more purple, something like that. And then instead, to make it stand out, we're going to alter the shadow. So we talked about this before, that we might change the shadow from black to something else, right? So let's do color, and we're going to do a colorize, just because we want a simple color change. And we'll increase the lightness so that we can see our shadow. Increase the saturation. And now you can pick a color that makes it stand out more. Let's go more, more bright, almost, an almost white. Let's go like an iridescent, really bright. So that's now interesting, these colors that we're seeing. They kind of contrast more. They make it pop just a little bit more. But again, it doesn't look awesome with the font. So I want to do one more thing. Let's take this combined text, and we're going to duplicate it. And let's bring it down one level. And I'm going to call this Combined Outline. And what I want to do with this, let's do the color select to take away all the transparency. So we're doing subtract from our current selection. We're going to click on the transparency. And now we've just got that. We're going to grow it by one pixel. So I'll select grow. We're going to make it one pixel bigger. We're going to do our giant paintbrush trick again. We're going to choose solid black on the foreground. And we're just going to paint over everything. And now when we look at it, you'll see that there's just a little layer of black peeking out from behind the text. And so I'm going to do filter blur, Gaussian blur, to make that a softer line. And then I'm going to duplicate the shade layer a few times to make it a harsher line and now I'm going to combine all these outline ones back down into a single outline and then the shadow I like the way the shadow is looking but I think it's too small so we're going to redo that shadow layer control all delete I'm going to take the text the combined text layer again and I'm going to use my subtraction tool so control all click on the subtraction tool to get rid of all that and I'm gonna select grow, because this time I want a much bigger shadow. So let's go like, I don't know, let's see what 10 pixels looks like. 10 pixels, I think we could do even more. So undo, let's say 25 pixels. So a nice thick border all around everything, right? And we'll come back down here to our text shade. And this time let's pick a color that we want. So let's pick, let's pick this harsh green, just to see what that looks like. And we'll pick our paintbrush again. And now when we paint in our harsh green, you'll see that it pops almost immediately, right? Now we could pick, you know, whatever color we want. We could try, you know, yellows or golds or things like that. You could decide that you like the harsh outline or you could like the softer one that we had before. So if we did a blur, Gaussian blur, you know, you could make it a, a big blur like we had before 
or you could just do a little blur to kind of soften the edge. I think I like a little blur, almost gives it a sticker vibe. So we're gonna do a little blur, and again, I'm gonna duplicate this layer a couple times to make that edge a little bit harsher. And then I'm gonna merge them back down into one copy. And there we go. So again, it's not that this thumbnail is a thing of beauty, but it shows exactly how you would create a thumbnail, make it stand out, use a texture that you've imported, and create your own handmade metallic texture. Now, before we export this, let's just show what the layers look like. So we've got our combined text layer. That's all in one right here, right? And we've got our outline layer. That's this guy if we turn him on and off. We've got our shade layer. That's this guy if we turn him on and off. Uh, we, I forgot to enable our temp mockup layer, but I think I don't want him anymore. I think that the brick by itself looks pretty good. We've got our brick layer right here. Uh, and we've got our colored metal layer and our metal shade layer is this guy. So you can kind of see what you want. You don't need all the layers on, but you want to make sure that you've got all the ones that you need on. And then once you're happy with the way your image looks, you can save it and we can export it. So if you do a file, export, you can either say export for the first time, uh, and then if you want to overwrite it, export will just keep overwriting that when you export it. Whereas export as will say, I specifically want to save this as a new thing. But the first time it doesn't matter, you can do either one. So we're going to do an export. It's going to default to the same folder you're on and the same name you're on, metaltexture.png. That looks fine by me. And so you could export that right here. But, oh no, I've made a mistake. You'll see. But export that. So if we export this guy, he'll just create a PNG copy for us. And now if we go back to our folder structure, if we go to our desktop, um, we've got this metal texture here. YouTube actually doesn't want a 1080p image. YouTube likes a 720p image for its thumbnails. So let's go back into here and we're going to scale this really quickly. I'm gonna keep it saved in 1080p, but for a moment, we're just gonna to go to image, scale image. We're gonna change the image size to be 1280 and it'll default to 720 because that's the same dimensions. So if we scale this, it'll scale down to the size that YouTube wants it. And now we can say file, export, and by default that will overwrite our current texture. But I don't want to save it like this because I actually want to save it in 1080p in case I want to edit it because then I can edit it more finely. So I'm going to hit Control Z. Whoops, the screen wasn't selected. Control Z. Now it's back to 1080p. So I've saved it in 1080p, but I've exported it in 12 or in 720p so that YouTube can use it more clearly. So hopefully this hasn't been too big a dive, but you can see that there are a lot of tools you can do. Obviously the toolbar on the left, the tool settings is very important. Fonts is fairly important and then the layers is all important. That's what GIMP's about. GIMP's about creating layers to layer in cool things on top of each other to make an awesome composite image. But I hope this has been useful. And as always, I've been Cynical Siebel. Thank you for joining me. And be sure to subscribe and like, uh, because down below there's a playlist of all of these tutorials I'm going to do, and they're going to get more in-depth, and I'm going to make cooler things. We're going to start making HTML puppets next. So I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.